Uh, welcome to Learning to Talk. And we're here. Hey. This is, that was I was unprepared for that. <laughs> I was too, honestly. I just I just did it. You just went for you it. You didn't scream. You didn't. Yeah, nothing. No. Uh, today we're going to talk about music, but first, uh, Zach has brought some nonsense for us to partake in. Thus, the tiny little Starbucks cups. That uh, honestly, bud, you could have you could have put a green thing in there. I went through the drive-thru. This is oh, how they handed them to me. It's so yeah. messy. I know. Yeah, I was actually kind of upset halfway through here that they, they were, were spilling. spilling. Well, like, if you look at mine, mine the the I don't know how this happened. The level is above the lid. Surface how, tension. How did they even do that? Did they, they didn't fill it up through the little hole. Do you see that? No, Am that's I, just that's the shadow of the light going through. Oh yeah, okay. I'm stupid. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Look. Yeah. Okay. No, that's it's, coffee sitting in the in the lip that you're seeing move. There's no way. This makes yeah. for really great audio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I so, call it bogus. So Zach, uh, I, we each have in front of us a small, a which, short coffee. Yeah, Tell me about a this. small coffee with a little bit of cream, which is nothing special. Um, just a tool for. Oh, the, this is just coffee. Yeah, it's just coffee. Okay. with a little cream. There's nothing special about it. That's not the nonsense. that's not the thing. That's I thought the, the nonsense was going to be a praline thing because we talked about it last uh, week. Oh yeah, yeah. No. The anyway, okay. Starbucks chestnut praline latte is pretty good. It, don't get it in a small though because I think they put too much syrup in it, and then it is sweet. The whole thing I love about mm. the chestnut praline latte is it's not too sweet. But mm. then I got mm. a tiny one the other day, and it was like every other latte I've ever had from there that was too. Mm -hmm. Candy like interesting, yeah. So, anyway, but today we're going to do a Tim Tam slam. Okay, Okay. I need you to explain what a Tim Tam slam is. Well, Tim Tams are originally made, I believe, in Australia. What's it? Is it a cookie? It is a biscuit, irresistible chocolatey happiness in a biscuit. (laughs) Okay, um, and I originally had these years and years ago. When my cousin was living in Australia and she would bring them home and then she taught us how to do Tin Tam Slams and then they started selling them in the States sometime in the last 10, 15 years. Um, The presentation is good. Yeah. It's so quite good. It so looks they look good. They are good. They're they're chocolatey biscuits filled with chocolate, covered in chocolate. It's a lot of chocolate. Yeah, yeah. it can't be bad, um, really. So oh, t- you guys can each take one of these. Can I be honest? I'm not yeah. the biggest like chocolate fan. That's okay. I think chocolate side tangent, chocolate ice cream totally overrated Ugh, people. I agree. Like, not great. Mm, yeah. Not great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You don't get a vote. Okay. Peanut butter <laughs> ice cream is probably my favorite. But it's good. All right. All right. So you're going to take actually you need to take the lid off of your coffee. Oh, okay. So we're going to make a huge mess. I know. Try not to make too much of a mess. Should I drink should we drink down some of this oh crap. I spilled it on the podcasting equipment. <laughs> um <laughs> um I haven't had coffee in weeks. Well, here you it's, go. It's one of the tastes, like, it doesn't taste too, too bad to me, but it smells absolutely horrible. The coffee got in the coils. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we'll deal with that after. Oh, see how full this is? Oh, I my. know, that is too full. Mine I... is too full. Mine <laughs> so, is way full. I'm going to drink a little bit of yeah, it. Yeah, drink a little bit. And so, oh, it's like so lukewarm. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's not bad, bad, I did though. my best. Okay. Did you buy this yesterday? No. Just. A little bit ago. Um, uh, Zach, thank you for bringing us coffee. Oh, <laughs> I haven't had coffee in a while, and that's a good treat. All right, now yeah. tell us what we have so to do. So what you're going to do is not simply just dip this in there, because that would be good, right? Okay. But what we're going to do is you're going to take this, you're going to bite off this corner. Do you drink through it? And then bite off this corner. What? Bite off opposite, opposite corners. Then you're going to use it as a straw and suck coffee up through it. Hmm? And then you're going to slam the whole cookie in your mouth. Did you actually get coffee through it? Mm Mm-hmm. That softened up. Yeah, it like disintegrates on the inside of the chocolate. And then... Whoa. That's... If you're going to drink lukewarm coffee... This is the, probably the way you should do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it is better with hot coffee, although it's that harder. Was, that was There's shocking. more skill involved when the coffee's hot mm. because that thing starts to like disintegrate into nothing really fast, and you kind of have to slam it in your mouth before it falls apart into nothing. That 
I did not see coming. Yeah. Dude, that was good. That was a nice experience. That was really good. You okay. Know, do you want another one before? I do. <laughs> <laughs> we've been, uh, so the la- we've done this a few episodes where one of us will bring oh, a treat good. that the others have not had. Cam brought a candy bar. I brought some chips last time. And now you've brought the Tim Tam Slam our way. And we've been rating just these delightful experiences, scale of one to 10, add some decimals. Uh, I give that as an overall experience. A, I'm probably not going to seek it out intentionally, like go buy Tim Tams for my house. Mm-hmm. I give that a, like a seven point six out of ten. Just a nice, a nice little treat. Thanks for introducing my mouth to that. Oh, I've not had one of those for a long time. And you're right. I mean, it's it's less of an experience with lukewarm coffee. It's the best I could do. But that was a fantastic experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I have no idea what to rate that. I was like. And I was like, you know, you get a churro and you eat a churro, or you get a churro at Disneyland. Which one's better? Probably the one at Disneyland. <laughs> Out of all churros, Disneyland no, I'm just churros. Because you're there, you're happier. Like yeah. the experience helped. Um, oh, that was. I think because it was so shocking, I give it a, a seven point eight. Nice. Yep. Yeah. What about you, Zach? I mean, I, I the. <laughs> Well, that was good. I I love this. I forgot how much I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you know that's that's an eight two for me. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean it's it's I I appreciate cookies that like get soggy with something. Mm. You know <laughs> I I instead of dipping chocolate chip cookies or peanut butter cookies in milk, I break them up in the to a mug and then pour milk over them and eat them with a spoon. You're okay, a, you're a monster. Okay, that's a little weird, but I, I will say, I will, I will say this. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't describe that as making the cookie like soggy though. No, it it's like transforms just turned, it into something. It's completely just like, different. It's like soft, but like, wow, that was that was shocking. That it's, was incredible. It's like a gusher. You know, you eat a gusher and it's got the gummy outside, but that ooey gooey inside yeah that's what that was like if if a cookie could be a gusher that's what that was yeah you know so that's a good explanation so it's not really yeah it doesn't make a soggy cookie like an oreo and you dip it in there it makes it a cookie gusher yeah because the chocolate exterior coats it in a impenetrable yeah like shield oh that was so good because like <laughs> it wasn't like too sweet because there's coffee right that was legit. That <laughs> was great. That's that came from where? Australia. That's an Australian thing. Wow. Yeah. If you Google it, you know, there's all kinds of videos of people doing Tim Tam slams, and it is harder. It's there's more skill involved when it's hot. Yeah. Because that out, that exterior impenetrable thing becomes penetrable pretty quick <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. when it's hot from the inside out. Like mm. so, it starts like falling apart. Right. So right. Right. It's right. like <laughs> suck it all the way through, and then <laughs> the slamming it in your mouth is why they call it a Tim Tam slam because you kind of got to do it you got quickly. The timing before has to be right. it falls apart. Gotcha. So you gotta you got an introductory experience of it not quite like taking as much skill. But the flavor is still there. Well, thanks for introducing yeah. that. To I us. feel like that's a great. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. That's a little. I love that. I'll bring that up again at some point in my life to somebody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Nice. Yep. All right. Well, uh, so <laughs> time to segue. <laughs> no, that was good. That was fantastic. <laughs> Candace was keep talking about. Yeah, <laughs> that was so good. I'm actually shocked. <laughs> like I didn't know where you were going. Anyway, I'm done talking about it. No, it was delightful. That was absolutely delightful. Um, Today we're talking about music and, uh, you know, so much of this podcast to this point has been really about, um, stories and kind of processing some questions. And today is just, I think we're just going to talk about music and like what music is meant in our lives. Uh, all three of us have music in our, maybe I'll say in our DNA as people, like in our formative years, especially. And, and now we can, we'll flesh out what sort of the role music has in our lives now as we go as well. But today we're going to talk about music. It's the music episode, um, how we learned to love music, what music meant to us growing up, what it means to us now, and and sort of all the things around that. So that's what today's discussion is. I don't really have a good starting place for this discussion, um, despite my minutes of thinking of it earlier today. I did print out some questions on here, but I don't know if any of them are super helpful to get us started. But let, let's start here. Um, friends, what is the first, like, your first memory 
of music. Maybe we'll start there. Like think back into your life to your, the first time music like meant something to you or touched you or intrigued you. Yeah. So if you already got to go for it. Yeah. yeah, My my dad um, plays piano and uh, he's a pastor preacher. He, he has, you don't get him to play piano very often anymore, but he took piano lessons all through his childhood, but he wrote songs for like, me and every one of my siblings and even some of my cousins and for his dad and for each of our, my, me and my brother's weddings, he wrote a song. Um, and so I, the earliest memories I have are my dad sitting at the piano singing. If I had a chance to choose my son, I would have chosen you like a song that he wrote for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I can remember even in those early days, like, um, the worship leader at the church that he pastored would come over and like play come. They'd play in the living room. He'd play bass sometimes because he played bass in like jazz band in college. And um, so there was always music around um, in my childhood and my dad and the guys in the living room. Cool. That's a much more heartfelt story than uh, (laughs) the one that I have. (laughs) But my first memory is my dad drilling a hole in our living room floor because under our living room. So I used to live in Williston and he had a Coca-Cola. My dad used to collect Coca-Cola stuff. Mm -hmm. He had a Coca-Cola drum set that was played in like the 19 something, something Olympics. Like it was kind of cool. Nice. Um, I don't know what happened to it. We must've got rid of it anyway. Um, and this was back before like iPods. So he was drilling a hole in the living room so he could fish a headphone wire from our like stereo setup. Right. So he could play drums to music or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then for me, like uh, my earliest music, I didn't grow up in a musical household. Neither of my parents play any instruments or music, but I remember growing up my dad after work, he'd like go into the, the other room in the house, you know, we had like the family room and the dining room and kitchen. And then there was like another living room, but no one ever used that one. Yeah. But my dad had like a roll top <laughs> desk and, and would like pay bills and, you know, stuff, whatever dads used to do after work that, <laughs> you know, and moms would be like, honey, he's, let's leave your father alone. He just got home from work. Uh, I don't get that privilege now, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he'd be in there like playing music and paying bills. And he had like this, he still has this giant bookcase. It's like very cool and, and has like different size shelving units and stuff in it and record player and lots of records. And he'd just like sit, my dad was like a big REM fan and like the Smiths and, and Morrissey. And, um, so he'd just like, listen to these like eighties, you know, alt rock music while he'd pay bills. And that's like, I just have memories of like, winter it's dark already my dad's in the other room i can hear the music playing like while my mom's getting dinner ready Mm. kind of stuff uh yeah so what about your first like you're a musician obviously zach you're a worship leader Mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of one of the big things about you yep uh cam you play drums i grew up i play guitar and bass and all that why did you start playing music Mm. what got you into the learning to do that yeah i would bang on everything as a drum my from like as early as i can remember i can remember like sitting in the car and my and like music being on the car and tapping on the back of a seat or something and i can remember even like my parents saying no that's that's pretty good you know um (laughs) from an early age and then come uh, I think I was, I was like eight or nine years old. Uh, my parents, I wanted to take drum lessons. I got a drum set from my, my parents bought me a drum set for my birthday. Like I think my ninth birthday from like a yard sale for $30. And I didn't even know how to set it up. Got it set up. I mean, I didn't, I just kind of looked at it mostly because I was like, I don't know what to do with this. Um, 
but I wanted drum lessons and my dad told me that I couldn't take drum lessons until I took two years of piano. Um, and so at like nine years old, I started taking piano lessons from a lady across town. And now, so it sounds like piano was a means to an end for you. It was like, yeah, I have I'm, to do this to play <laughs> drums in the process of taking piano lessons. Did that like, did the means to the end kind of drop off? Did you fall in love with piano? I didn't fall in love with piano. I, I didn't fall in love with practicing. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I did figure out pretty quick that I was very musically inclined and could like had a good ear. Cause I can remember pretty quickly figuring out that if I got my teacher to play my piece for me once, rather than like having to plug plunk it out, like by sight reading it that I could, once I heard it once then I could, the, the notes kind of made sense on the page and then I could do it. Um, and so I'd always get her to like, well, could you play it once for me? And then, then it was over. So I never really, <laughs> learned, yeah, yeah. Or it wasn't really great. I never got the skill of sight reading d- down very well. Cause I just did everything by ear. Um, that's actually, that is hilarious because back when I was in band, cause I can't read a book, let alone music. <laughs> and, uh, I would always have my friend Kip play the part for me and mm-hmm. then I just, play what he played yeah because i couldn't read it but i could i could listen and do it you know right That's yeah fine. so two years of piano lessons ended i was happy for that to be over um as a 11 year old and then i took like a handful of drum lessons from the drummer at the church that my dad was pastoring and mostly just learned from watching him play each week yeah were you playing drums like in that two year piano period too? Like, were you tinkering? Not really. I mean, those are, I didn't really start playing drums until it was. So I think that if I, if my timeline's correct in my head, it was that summer. I think I, maybe it was t- 11 and 12. I took piano lessons, something like that. And, um, that year I turned 12 is when my dad started the church that I kind of grew up in after that, um, that had drums. So like prior to that, it wasn't a church that didn't have drums. Um, and so that's when I started watching Cause I just, that's how I learn. I learn from listening and watching. And so week after week I would just watch him and he came over and showed me a few basics and that it was it was that year that I kind of started playing, but I never really played because I didn't enjoy playing by myself, mm. and I didn't develop the love for like the discipline of practice, with, you know, in um, in piano lessons. That was always like mm. pulling teeth, and and so I wouldn't sit there and play drums really, like I some like in those formative years, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. But really, it was one Sunday, I think I was 15 years old, and I would play hand drums a lot. That's what I would play with people, mm-hmm. and then one Sunday morning, the drummer didn't show up to church, and someone said, you play drums, right, Zach? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I have a drum set. <laughs> um, <laughs> Classic church conundrum. <laughs> yeah. And yep. the, I, I sat down behind the drum set and did everything that I'd been watching and listening yeah. to. Cool. It was, and that was the beginning of the end. And I would, you were hooked after that. Yeah. yeah. And so then I would, you know, played in bands and started, picked up a guitar and, figured it all out nice cam how'd you get into playing music well exactly what i said at the beginning is my dad had this drum set in the downstairs and i would just probably like i mean i don't remember this this would have been when i was like four or five um that was my earliest memory but i was probably like five years old when when he was drilling a hole through the you know (laughs) into the basement i didn't know your dad played drums yeah i mean i mean he stopped like I, I have very vague memories of him playing drums. Okay. It was it, it was like he stopped when we moved here, and we moved here when I was seven. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where it started. And my next earliest memory is I found this dude named Travis Barker, and that was it. 
I just wanted to be Travis Barker. <laughs> the and drummer of Blink-182. The drummer yeah. of Blink-182. I, I, mean, I was him for Halloween. <laughs> I had a clip-on nose ring that I would wear. <laughs> I had tattoo sleeves that I'd put on. I, I had a Famous t-shirt. Remember Famous? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I was Travis Barker for Halloween just about every year. But, um, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I just, gosh, I loved playing drums when I was a kid. I always thought I was going to be in a band. That's what I thought I was going to do. But... Um, Oh, what else was I going to say? Yeah, it was a ton of fun. Couldn't read music to save my life. But you play in marching band? Yeah, so like when I was probably like 10, 11, probably, well, actually probably even a little bit younger than that. I remember um, in Founders, which would have been like fifth grade, I was taking, I started taking lessons because that's when I started playing in school band and I couldn't read music. So I started taking lessons over at Contoys to learn how to read music Mm -hmm. but yeah in high school we played in like pep band and stuff that was so much fun i played quads nice i wanted to be a snare drum guy so bad but my (laughs) music teacher wouldn't let me because i don't know why he he always pissed me off but he uh (laughs) but i uh darn teachers yeah i know i know i played quads and it was it was so much fun those those gut championship hockey games dude oh so fun anyway yeah see i i was homeschooled I never played mm. in in band, which, you know, I don't know. It might have saved me from <clears throat> being one of those guys. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I quit. It was actually funny. I quit band my sophomore year of high school so I could take more film classes. Nice. That's kind of where the the road ended. But I always wanted to be in the to play drums in band in school. Um, you're homeschooled. I don't know if they do this anymore. But like when I was in elementary school, they made you all learn an instrument. Oh yeah, like uh, so, what, what is that thing called? The recorder, yeah. No, no, but like for in fifth grade, I transferred from uh, Catholic private school to public school in fifth grade, and in fifth grade they started like music education, huh. so everyone got an instrument, and I desperately wanted to play drums, but I don't know how they selected kids to be uh, to do drums because I'm sure if every kid got to choose, they everyone would be a drummer, you know. Mm-hmm. But I didn't get picked, and I was really sad about that. Uh, But they gave me the instrument that they give every kid that they don't believe in, the trombone. (laughs) (laughs) So I, like, for, you know, and we're, like, trying to play hot cross buns, and I'm, like, I don't, fifth grade, I don't know how to read music. This instrument's as tall as I am. I'm just, like, brrp, brrp, brrp. And I, like, just fart your way through it, and, like, kids are playing trumpet, like, I'm there, like, getting spit out of the trombone like you know it's just gross but they never let me be a drummer and then my mom was like you're gonna keep doing it in high school and like i did it for like a few weeks in high school and i like kept leaving my trombone just at school and she's like all right you're done i'm not gonna keep paying for you to have this trombone because we had to rent it yeah i remember renting stuff i think the small rant this happened to me with a lot of things in school where I would like love something and then school kind of like took my love for it and threw it down the trash just because <laughs> like they made it work, you know? So like, for instance, with drums, like if you were going to be a drummer in school, you had to play bells. Oh yeah. And I was like, this is not a drum. <laughs> this is a piano. And I was so mad. Like, Oh, I hate it. was like hand bells or like what? bells and xylophones. Oh yeah. Dude. And it's just like, this is stupid. Dr- like drums. Oh, xylophones don't have- pretty cool. I don't like playing my xylophone, but yeah, I was just like, I'm not interested. in. So how I, how I started playing music when I was a kid was my, in preschool, I had this friend named Jeffrey and Jeffrey was like my best friend and he was a year younger than me. So like I finished preschool, he was still in preschool, but our moms were friends. So we like would hang out regularly. Jeff's dad was in a band, Mm. like a local cover band in Southern Connecticut called the boneheads. And he played piano and he sang and his buddy is so like Jeff grew up in this musical house and he started playing drums at a really young age. So I'd go to his house and he'd have his drum set and I'd like hit it and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was so into that. And I remember being like, I don't know how old I was, but we were young. It wasn't preschool, but it was early like elementary school, first, second grade, maybe. And he's playing drums and I'm like, I want to play drums, but he plays drums. And if we're ever going to start a band, I can't also play drums. Right. So then I started to learn how to play guitar. I really started in middle school learning guitar, but it was in those years of my friend Jeff playing drums and me wanting to be like that. 
where I decided like, oh, I want to play music, but I can't play drums. Right. Because Jeff plays drums, so I'm going to play guitar. And over time, like, started to, like, my grandma had this old, like, classical nylon string acoustic that she gave me. And it was, like, the neck was so wide and my tiny hands, like, couldn't get <laughs> around it. And I remember, like, trying to learn on that thing. And um, I took guitar lessons in middle school. Me and my best friend, Mike, um, together decided to do that. We started taking guitar lessons together. And, um, you know, we did that. I did that for about a year and a half. And I was pretty pretty proficient very quickly. Like I, I could play whatever. Mm -hmm. If you were going to teach me to play something, I could play it pretty quickly and pretty easily. Like you, Zach, I hated practicing. I never sat in my room and just went, you know, just went at it in my room, like playing guitar and like learning songs and scales (sighs) and doing that. And, uh, so that was like my downfall eventually. And we will talk about that as we go, I think, but but I was pretty proficient pretty quickly. And um, because of that, I had a, like a high view of myself as a guitar player, which was not fair because <laughs> I wasn't that good. But but just picking it up pretty quickly gave me like a lot of confidence yeah. early on. Um, when I was, I started going to youth group in middle school. And then my freshman year of high school, our church youth group was going to do like a battle of the bands. I was like, I want to do that. I play guitar. I know a drummer, my friend Jeff. We'll we'll see if we can get a couple other guys. So I talked to some guys I knew in youth group. We had another guy who played guitar. His name was Matt. He was two years older than me who could sing. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, my friend Rob, he would play guitar and he was pretty good. So then I said, oh, I'll play bass. So we've got these two guys playing guitar. I moved to bass. I started playing bass and my friend Jeff. And for this battle of the bands, we we like came up with four songs we were going to play. We played like wipe out, you know, <laughs> so we like did that, you know, cause we're all like 13, 14, you know, 15. We played a Reliant K song. It's oh, funny. Cause yes. when we got here, Cam, you were jamming out to Reliant K working on your dirt bike. Yep. We played a Reliant K song. Um, I think it was hello McFly off their first album. We played that and, uh, two more songs. I can't remember. And, uh, yeah, we played like in our church battle of the bands. And after that, we were like, hey, let's let's keep doing this. So we like stayed a band and we practiced, we wrote songs, and we're like, again, I'm like 14 years old, 15 years old. I'm like, we're playing music in our garages, in our basements. Our parents are like driving us here and there with our equipment. And over time, like we started booking shows. So like at 15 years old. I'm, and we, we kind of fell into this like very simple pop punk kind of thing is what we, Mm -hmm. you know, power chords and easy rhythms and, you know, it's very unsophisticated music. (laughs) Uh, but we wrote like, but wonderful. We had a bunch of songs and we started playing shows. So like 15 years old, me and my buddies, our mommies are dropping us off at like these clubs in Danbury, Connecticut playing with like legit like crusty punk bands these guys are like doing heroin in the parking lot you know and they're like circle pits and this and that and like we're up there we're playing we call ourselves slim pickings and we were like we would play shows like several times a month we'd do this for like a couple of years that's awesome and uh it was just such a blast because that we were like going to shows we were playing shows we were supporting our friends bands we were even at this point where this other this other band local like like crusty punk band uh their name was fourth corpse <laughs> and uh they like made fun of us all the time because we were like young and our mommies dropped us off and then this other band we were friends with uh the the singer was this guy named big jim and he was older and he was like our buddy and he, they like beat up this other band because we were <laughs> like they were like protecting us young kids but it the was band like band turf wars it was a blast like we we played a lot of shows at a young age. I had like a Mohawk for a while and my (laughs) bass was covered in stickers and we were, we were like listening to local punk bands and like other, other pop punk bands like kid dynamite and, and the queers and, um, Mr. T experience. And like all these, all this music was just like part of my life in like my early high school years. That's like what I did Mm -hmm. was music. 
And it was so fun because it was like all my friends and we had other friends in our group who they, they made bands too. And we were like playing shows together. It was just a blast. Those were good days. Yeah. It was a blast. Yeah. It was, I was a little bit later to the actually joining a band train probably cause I was homeschooled. Um, but I can remember going to friends shows and we had a, in high school we had a sweet little like scene yeah. in central Kentucky, you know, bands coming through and um and then the local local bands playing and it was you know, we were always going to shows and um yeah, I was I can remember <laughs> early like 12, I think 13 Going taking my bongos that I had over to this kid's house. And I like that like, motion. Uh, like, like little bongo, bongo man. little bongos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and my grandfather built me this. He was a woodworker, and he built me a like stand for that my bongos like sat in, and then he like cut, it had like a big. Z. It's in my office. If you guys ever come see it, it's got this big Z on the front of it um, for Zach. <laughs> and it, like, I would play my bongo because that was that was my thing for a while before I started playing drums. Set mm. was I was just like bongo got the bongo kid. Yeah. Um, the, the what do they call that? <clears throat> percussion. Percussion. Right? Yeah, yeah. The auxiliary the percussion. percussion. Yeah. 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 Um, and, uh, but yeah, I can remember at like 17, this guy, I kind of knew that went to the ch my church, but sort of didn't really come to youth group. He was a year older than me. He was like, Hey, do you want to come audition for a band that me and my buddy are trying to start? I was like, sure. Mm. Yeah. And I like showed up at this house. These guys had never, like Aaron, my good, one of my good friends never met before him before this. And they like had this drum set set up on their back deck. It was summer. It was so hot. And we like played a couple songs together on the back deck and just sweating. And then then we started a band, a three piece, like bass, drums, and guitar. And we we played together for four years. Like I think that was yeah. seventeen, seventeen to twenty one. It was awesome. I mean, we recorded like three or four albums. We toured one summer. It was it was super fun. Estel. Was the was the name of the band? We it's a super geeky, you know. <laughs> so it's, like, it's, like, it's a elvish word for hope. <laughs> it's an elvish. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, um, mm -hmm. I think it's supposed to be Estelle, but nice. E S T E L. But yeah, I was never in a band. No, I always wanted to be, but like I was too young in the sense of like when I really wanted to be in a band and was drumming a lot and all this stuff. <laughs> Like nobody was at the age to like know how to play guitar or, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like, cause this, I would have been like eight, nine, 10, 11, somewhere in there. And just knew, nobody knew how to do anything at that point. You know you, what I mean? You didn't know Trevor then. No, he actually, he probably would have been the guy. <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> uh, he probably would have played punk rock. So, no. you know, did you ever play with people cam? Like, Get together and just jam out? No, not until probably, <clears throat> the, well, excluding band. Yeah. Probably like three years ago, three, four years ago, when Trevor was working out of my basement is the first time I played with another person. Yeah, no <laughs> was, kidding. Wow. Was with Trevor, yeah. What was that experience like after just having played alone for so long? It's really hard, but also like Trevor's a genius. So what we would do is like, okay, so... For anybody watching right now, my drum set is about four feet that direction. <laughs> um, so he, we would set up right here, and he brought this big amp and then his keyboard. And, if, and Trevor can play anything with his eyes closed, right? And he was just, like, ripping on the keyboard, doing, like, like not like not like a piano sound, but, like, other stuff. Just, like, groovy, like all the stuff and I was just playing to it and we must have been here and we had like four of our friends just like watching <laughs> and like everybody was loving it and it was like we must have played for like an hour and a half straight without stopping and it was so much fun um and then I think my next experience would have been I don't know I don't remember what came first either 150 or I think Rev Youth or Rev I think that was probably I think yeah. that was the first time you played in the basement yeah downtown. so that would have been the that would have been the next first time I guess but yeah, very recently. Because yeah. um, like I kind of stopped playing drums like in the middle of high school. 
because I started filming and got a job and got old. Grown up stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think back on my years playing in band and after that first band I was in dissolved, you know, we just kind of ran our course. I started another band and we played like we, so um, the second band I started with daughter dance alchemist was the name of our second band. And this was like senior year of high school into freshman year of college. And we, um, I played, I switched back to guitar and my friend Corey, who um, he is an excellent, excellent um, guitar player and, and songwriter, but he, he's now plays like he's in a legitimate band that tours and he gets like a paycheck for mm -hmm. um so he's in this band now and uh <clears throat> but he and he would sit and just play guitar all day you know something i never did i never had that level of commitment but he like he <laughs> he won't care uh, he dropped out of high school twice to like get more into music mm -hmm. and like <laughs> he came back and dropped out again because his wiring was for that, you know, so all his yeah. time was spent playing and practicing and running scales and chords and writing music. And, um, but him and I, and then our other friend, Mike played bass and he ran this, the, like this club in town. And, um, then this other guy we knew played drums and, uh, Mike would like book us shows. And some of them were like with 20 people. But we played one show with some pretty legit band. Like we we played in front of like six hundred people at this one show with these like touring bands that came through. We actually, when I was younger in my first band days, um, it was right as like Fall Out Boy was starting to get big, and they came through. And not us, but our friends' band played and like opened for them, and they weren't a big deal then. But they like my buddy like lost something, and so one of the fallout boy guys, like they walked over to the music shop and like bought him a new thing of, you know, cord or whatever he had. And oh, that's cool. so, yeah, like had a relationship. So, I mean, it was just, it was like a really cool time in those days. This was like 2000 to 2005, like pre smartphone, pre social media, like MySpace was the social media or like live journal. Like mm -hmm. if you remember live journal, Zach, like, yeah. um, so, there was one other I can never remember the name of. Yeah, so it was like just this really interesting time where like there was like this big post-punk movement of like emo was emerging and um I don't know, we we just found ourselves kind of coming into this musical scene. It was like where like you were saying in Kentucky you had a good scene like in Southern Connecticut we had a really good scene for this stuff. Um we just found ourselves hitting at the right time with with just like what music we were into as like general music culture was developing in that moment. And, uh, I don't know. It was, it was super cool. It seems like you and I had similar approach to music in that we didn't like doing it by ourselves. Like I didn't ever want to sit in a room by myself and play an instrument, whether it was drums or guitar, like it just wasn't, it, that had zero appeal to me. It was always a social yeah. experience. Um, like I, I still to this day don't like playing music by myself. It's not enjoyable for me. Yeah. And I can't sing. Like <clears throat> if I could sing, it might've been different to like sit and sing and play songs, but I can't sing like yeah. legitimately. And, um, that's one thing I wish God had gifted me with was mm -hmm. able, able to sing. But, um, yeah, it just like for yeah, when I so as we were getting into our music days and so I I might have shared this with you guys. I don't think I shared it on my podcast where I told my ministry story, but when I was really young, the reason I left that Catholic school I mentioned and transferred to public school is cuz I was I was being bullied. Like I was severely bullied to the point of where I was like trying to everything I could to not go to school and like my parents finally like, we'll, we'll transfer you. So coming into a new school and like music sort of became my connection point. Like I was searching for identity. I was searching for friendships and I started to develop a taste for music that I saw people I wanted to hang out with had uh, the taste for that music and then started wanting to play music because people I knew were playing music and we were doing that together. So it very much for me was not just a social thing, but like a community identity mm. forming experience in my life. Like music was, you know, I was going to church and stuff and that was, that was something, but, but 
in those years, like music was really important for me as a young person whose brain is like mush and you're developing and someone who had been bullied pretty severely. Music was a real, yeah, identity and community forming experience in my life. So when, like you said, like sitting at home and playing by yourself, there's no community in that. It very much for me was, was, yeah, that, that connection point with other people as I was uh, learning and growing during those years. Hmm. Yeah. I love music. It's great. Yeah. And I don't, uh, so today, like today I barely play music anymore. I, I, my guitar is covered in dust. Like I looked at it this morning. It's in my bedroom. There's like a layer of dust on it. That made me sad. But like, I, I don't really pick up my guitar anymore. And I think part of it is because what I would need it in those days, I don't need now. Um, in terms of that, like identity and community thing, like I'm just not where I was when I was 15 years old. Like yeah. that was so long ago and I'm an adult now and I wish I had still had a passion and, and like drive to play music. But at the same time, like, yeah, whatever I was searching for and needing is not the same as it was when I was young. And I think, yeah, not having people to play with is also a big thing. So I don't really play music anymore. And that yeah. makes me sad. Like every time but, I do pick up my guitar, my calluses are gone. And then I walk away. I'm like, ah, ooh, it hurts. <laughs> do you, do you feel like in, with, in this season of your life where you don't need the communal aspect of music that you get your, what you do want to get out of music from listening to music now? I don't really listen to music like I did either. Like if I'm in my car or just hanging out. Sports I, radio. Yeah, we talked about <laughs> it, uh, you know, uh, in a previous episode. Like I listen to a lot of talk, podcasts or sports radio. I do still listen to music, but it's very limited. And there are bands I really, really, really like. And uh, bands that I used to really like that I don't really listen to anymore, you know. But music isn't as, yeah, just in general, it's not as as big <laughs> in my daily just a little day-to-day life. Like Do you listen to, to a lot of music? You know, oh, yeah. don't play a lot of music? Like constantly. <clears throat> yeah. I'm a big music guy. I listen to podcasts like on flights and stuff, but it's mostly music. All the what, time. What, what, why, what do you think? What, it, what does that do for you? What do, what is well, <laughs> <laughs> well, the okay. So listening to music does something d- different than playing music for sure. In the sense of like listening to music, one, I have this weird thing. This is kind of unrelated, but I have this weird thing where I can't be listening to a... So when I fly, because I fly all the time, mm-hmm. right? I have to be listening to music on the way up, like when we're taking off and when we're landing. <laughs> but I'm listening to like podcasts the whole rest of the time. I don't know why. It's just a weird thing I have. <laughs> but I also listen to music like always. And I think... I think a couple things. Music influences my mood a whole lot and then the only other use for it when i'm listening to it is to like just go brain dead (laughs) when i'm driving so either yeah there's a there's a couple things i guess so like if i'm for instance if i'm driving really early in the morning this this is probably everybody if i'm driving really early in the morning you're gonna listen to something slow and chill and whatever kind of wake you up start your day right middle of the day it's gonna be punk rock for me um but yeah, I don't know. I use it for a couple different things. What I find interesting about playing music now, because like I'm not an exceptional like, exceptional drummer. That's like I I play. I feel like the the way that I describe it to people now is like I am where I am. I'm never gonna get better, and I'm never gonna get worse. I'm just I found my lane, and that's where I'll be for the rest of my life. You know. But um, to be honest. And this, maybe this sounds cheesy because it might be cheesy. I don't really know. But I feel like, um, you know, when I go to places for like worship, I'm completely distracted the whole time. I'm a tech guy. I'm looking at everything. I'm listening to the nitty gritty stuff. Like it's just ruined. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I feel like my most authentic time of worship is when I'm in my basement alone playing drums. Yeah. I don't know. Is that weird? No, I that might think be that's weird. Real. It's cool. I remember very specifically 
um, at my church, we had a Sunday night service that during my high school years sort of got off the ground and became like a kind of a, a hub for us and my friend group and, you know, some younger people in the church. And uh, it was great. But we would often skip the Sunday night service if there was a band or a show we wanted to go to. And uh, some of the local bands we listened to um, in Connecticut, there were these some hardcore and metal bands that were, they were believers and they were Christian. And I remember one time saying to my friend, like, hey, should we feel bad about not being at church tonight? And he's like, no, because we're going to be worshiping more at this show than we would be, you know, over there at the church. Like, he very much felt that. And I think, I think there's... Like just a, it's not the same thing as you're saying, Cam, but there's like an active thing that happens like when you're playing music or like for us, when we're like in like sweating on each other, like screaming up at the stage as these guys are singing their music like that, this actively engaged, like with your hands and your heart and it, it yeah, things happen. Well, in a no, way. like for me, and I don't want to cut you off cause I know you're about to say something, but like, if you think about worship, right? Like worship is like love expressed to God. Right. And if we're to love God with our heart, soul, mind, whatever, like your body is a piece of that. If you're going to talk about like loving God, you must love with every part of you, including, including your soul, whatever your soul encompasses everything, right? Mm -hmm. Your body is included in that. So, you're shaking your head. I, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, used to yeah, be yeah. able to explain this better, no, but I'm, I'm you know you. where I'm going, yeah. right? Um, and Strength. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and for me, it's like, I feel like to really worship, you, there's, there's, you, your body has to be a part of it. Okay? And for me, drumming does that yeah. to a T. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I, I don't think... Well, uh, the, the, the scriptures are lit littered with, like, you know... Raise your hands, clap, make a noise. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's all like you got it. There's active participation yeah. that is a part of part of, is a essential part of, of expressing worship to God. I mean, and I think, I don't know if this probably isn't where you intended for this to go, but I'm going to go there <laughs> go. Um, is this has been a journey in music for me over really the last probably five years, five to seven years, but more re recent than a lot of other things is this idea of, of music in the context of worship. Like I, I like your definition of love expressed back to God. Like that's a good broad definition of, of what worship is. And, and music is a piece of that. Like, because we want to worship him in everything we do, eat, sleep, drink, you know, all that. Um, but there's something unique about music. And when you were talking about how your buddy said, well, worshiping God more in this context than we would over here in this context, it's that's real because music is often gets distilled down in our human minds without thinking about it to like this, this thing in the context of worship that we do to help us engage in that expression of of expressing love to God but the truth i think i believe is that music is the it its source is god like the the idea stems from him yeah. like it's it's like it's the creativity and the and music and and even music in the context of worship is his idea like he he likes it and he he that's why it's through the scriptures over and over again sing dance you know like make a joyful noise do like play the cymbals play the instruments like do all this and it, and and it's why when it talks about the throne room in heaven, like even right now mm -hmm. that he has, he has creatures and elders and angels who are singing around him. And it, and that's not so that the angels can like feel good so that they yeah. can like, right. Engage with his heart. It's because he wants it and he likes it and it's, and it flows from who he is. And I think I mentioned this in a previous episode, like music is like, it's so unique to humanity yeah. Like it's what is, why do we put sounds together and enjoy it? And like people weep 
or yeah. people people mm. laugh and and smile and and like there's emotion that comes with it. Music is so special. Yeah. And like the Bible like God wants us to use music to worship him very specifically. Like, right. you know, it's not just like, Hey, music is a part of worship and it is, but like worship in the Bible is mostly music, yeah. you know? And, and that's not, that's not a, an accident that God has gifted us with music and has asked us to use music in, in worshiping. Right. Him. And it's not a mistake that it does those things to us. It does change us. It's why you're saying like listening to music does these X, Y, Z, the different context to you. It changes your emotions. It does. And that's not because we're fickle humans that are easily swayed by music. Mostly it's because we're created in the image of God, the one who likes music and created it. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> like yeah. it's, 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 it's because we, we are like him that music does what it does to us. Yeah. Yeah. It is a gift. I think that's a, that's the key word that you mentioned. Yeah. That's resonating in my mind right now. It's like, yeah, we, we get to, exp- how freaking cool is that? It's just cool. It's you awesome. Know? I want to ask you guys some, some questions yep. okay. and of myself as well. We're going to do a few, uh, like, like rapid, it doesn't have to be rapid fire, but I just have some curiosities here. Uh, you know, we're talking about music. What, uh, let me, I'm just going to ask him, what is your, what's your favorite band right now? Oh, Mm. forever and always Blink-182. Blink-182. Always, always always has been, always will be. I don't do favorites very well, Matt. Tell me a band you're listening to a lot right now. I, I I'll, don't listen I'll to him. Yeah, go. I'll go. I don't I'll go. <laughs> you, you failed. I did fail. <laughs> That's so terrible. Uh, my favorite band is probably Death Cab for Cutie. I just mm. I love Death Cab, yep. and I've been listening to them for a long time. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of other bands I listen to, but Death Cab's probably the one that sun. Like my rap, Spotify Wrapped just came out. You know, we all got uh, our uh, for yeah, Spotify. Spotify. No, I'm listen, a, listen oh, to man. this. So on Spotify, it tells you uh, like what music you listen to the most and artists and like all this. I listen to of Death Cab listeners on Spotify. I was in the top 0.5 percent of Death Cab <laughs> listeners. Like I listen mm. to Death Cab more than 99.5 percent of other people who also listen to Death Cab on Spotify. Dang like well. that's how much I like Death Cab. Like I I cruise, you know. Yeah, mine was shocking. My rap one. YouTube should do something like that too. Um, there, there's this band called Hotel Apache. Apache. I don't actually know the word. Apache. 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 How's it spelled? You know, like the A P A C H E. Apache. Yeah. Apache. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. even know what that word means or where it comes from. So but it's like an Indian, Native, American Native American thing. thing. I'm in their. I'm in their point nine percent of their. <laughs> that was my number one band this year. I was like, nice. oh wow, surprising. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, I was going to say this earlier, Cam, as you were making a comment too. We'll get to another yeah. rapid question in a sec, but I've I found like I don't listen to a lot of music because I'm an active music listener. Like I I can't zone out and listen to music. I am actively engaged when I listen to it. Oh, I'm not. That so way. for me, I can't turn off my brain and listen to music because I'm thinking about it mm-hmm. as I'm listening to it very intently. So anyway, yeah, um, I, I don't. I mean, I listen to very little music, which is yeah. And you're a musician. Weird. I know. That's it's fine. It's like what you do. You sure like Corey Asbury isn't your favorite no. like, guy right now? Yeah. Yeah, I, All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's, yeah, it's, we could go down a long but intro that we're not going to. All right. Another, <laughs> que- another question. First album you remember purchasing? And Cam, I don't know if purchasing albums ever been part of your life. It was. But yeah, it was. What's <laughs> the first album you ever purchased? <laughs> I have a funny answer. What is it? Enema of the State. <laughs> It's going to because I remember I, I bought it. My dad, I had to like pass music past my parents because they bought it. Right. Right. And my dad was like, what did that just say? <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Anyway, Did you like, did, when you buy it, were you buying like a digital version? of Yeah, it, it was on iTunes. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was like, you know, so you didn't even have to buy for, a physical like CD or no, I've never, never, never. Uh, oh, interesting. What yeah. about you, Zach? What was your first album purchase? I think that I purchased myself was Audio Adrenaline. Remember them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think that was my first. Yeah. Or it might have been, there was this album 
the it was like a compilation album that they of a bunch of Christian artists that had like a dinosaur in the front. I forget what it was called. I don't uh, know. And uh, dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, they like re, they redid uh, like a bunch of anyway. Um, but I I remember those first CDs that I would buy. Interesting fact about being old um, is I would copy them onto cassette tapes because I had more. We only had one boom box with the CD player, but lots of different options for playing cassette tapes. So you would like play the CD and record on the tape player. I used to do that. I would also record off the radio. Yeah. Like I'd sit there and, you know, do that and make a mixtape, like a legit mixtape off the radio. Yeah. I never got into that. The, but right. I my I would get them like I would take them from my cousin or whatever. Yeah, my first album that I ever purchased with my own money, I remember I was young, fourth grade, fifth grade, somewhere in there, um, and I went to the Wiz. I don't know if you know what the Wiz is. It was mm-hmm. an old like electronic store. I don't know if it was local to like the New York area or what, but it was the Wiz. Mm. So I was like, think of. I mean, Circuit City's not around anymore. Best Buy, but when when those things Radio were Radio Shack, yeah. So the Wiz, and uh, and I went there and I bought with my own money. I bought uh, Nirvana's live album from the Muddy Banks of the Wishka, and that was the first album I ever bought myself. Nice. My friend Jeff, who I mentioned earlier, played drums. His dad was in that band. Big music guys. They big in the Beatles. That was like Beatles, Beatles, Beatles. Like, he will defend the Beatles to death <laughs> if you ever say anything bad about the Beatles. And uh, Nirvana was, like, one of the bands he introduced me to. So I, I like, very early on was into, like, that, you know, alt, grunge, um, punk thing. And I got the live. I didn't know it was live when I bought it. I just, like, I think I just picked a Nirvana album up out of the stack, and that yeah. was the one I picked, you know. On was, was what... what? Uh, what was that on CD? Yeah, it was CD. It was CD. on a CD. Yeah, the second album I ever purchased was uh, Five Iron Frenzies, nice. our newest album ever. And I was yeah. like, yeah. Anyway, uh, so what happened to Ska? I wish Ska didn't I die. Know, I know it was such a great Ska's genre. great, but you can only listen to it for a few minutes before you're like, all right, oh, it's all the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's still awesome. I do love Ska. Um, what uh, what effect do you guys see beyond just like the enjoying of music? But what effect do you see, like, having grown up playing music, listening to music, has that had on your life today? Like, is there anything that music has formed you or done for you that's kind of made you who you are now? Whether it's an attitude, a uh, thought process, or something else. I mean, obviously, like, Zach, you you play yeah, music and lead worship. It's, but like, like, it's such a... I, I feel like it's become such a part of like you started this whole thing like part of our dna it's like part of my identity in a and through the years has been swung too far either direction of of that being positive like for how i see myself and find my identity to like too much to too little but um i think i'm in a good spot where it's just part of i mean i it was like music is that such a core level of who I am and what, I mean, Megan and I, when we got married eight years ago, we like, we led worship in our ceremony together because it was like, this is who we want to be together, you know? Um, And, and so I think it's just so cool to see the way that, through the years, the different opportunities to continue to play and learn and grow and listen and, and, um, have kind of just dovetailed together for me. And, um, so it's like, the answer to your question is yes, (laughs) it's it's everything. It's like, I can't, I can't imagine my life without it in every season there's, it's been a major part of Well, I mean, yeah. What about you, Cam? How has music formed you? Yeah. I mean, I feel like everything, every little piece or passion that I had in my life got me or helped get, it, it explains where I am now, you know? And I often think like I wouldn't be 
a filmmaker if I wasn't into it as a kid, like playing drums and, and just into music really early because it's like just that background has allowed me to, I think, have a perspective and a filmmaking style of just understanding how music works and what it can do for emotion and how to lead into moments, how to lead in like use music to lead into moments, like whatever, um, that I bet some people won't have without that sort of upbringing, I guess. Mm. Um, but yeah, I feel like I wouldn't be a filmmaker without it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Question. Did yeah. skateboarding or blink 182 come first in your life? Blink 182. Yeah. So do you? They're think, about similar times, though. Yeah. But, so I'm wondering, like, because okay. you say that I wouldn't be a filmmaker without music, and mm-hmm. like, so you're a drummer. You found Blink 182. You want to be Travis Barker. Yeah. The punk rock, like Blink 182 crowd, probably, probably leaned, skating, yeah. leaned into skateboarding 100%. to some degree, and did for me. Yep. Right. And then skateboarding is what brought you to wanting to be. Like that's, making films. That's when I picked up a camera. Yeah. Right. And so. It's very practical. And something I was going <clears> to <throat> say, I was going to save it for the end, but I'm just going to say it now because it's the best opportunity I've had to say it. But a cool little story is kind of related, kind of not. I'm going to say it. It's a podcast. Who cares? So I, um, I was just thinking earlier, like I remember growing up playing drums, wanting to be in a band. I wanted to play on the big stages, all this stuff. And it's like just another moment of like, God's hand in my life to where drumming for me now is only for him Mm. really. But yet filmmaking, I have been on the biggest stages with a camera, Mm -hmm. like with the newsboys and with Andy Minio and, uh, who's a dude with a giant beard who plays folk music. Oh, um, Crowder. Crowder. Yeah. And like, I've gone to Nashville and shot high budget music videos and all this stuff like from the other side, which I think is just so cool. That is cool. You know? Yeah. What about you, Matt? Yeah. I think music for me, I mean, tie these things together. (laughs) Yeah. So I grew up like punk rock playing punk very much, uh, sort of in this counterculture ethos when I was in my teenage years And I think that has formed me today where I still very much like, that's how I live. Like, I shouldn't say it like that because I'm not like some crusty old punk dude going to shows, you know, but I, I do like some of the foundational things about that scene are still part of my life. Like I, I still kind of reject traditional structures and like authority structures, I would be, I think part of the reason I'm a pastor is because I never wanted to work a nine to five you know, and like, uh, like work for the man. And like, I have friends who, uh, like they work for these giant companies and they get relocated every couple of years. I'm like, that's a nightmare to me. <laughs> like I would, I would absolutely die if I lived that sort of life, you know? And I think part of that is because I was reared in this, uh, you know, this scene where like, you know, that was not a high value (laughs) was like having a good job and wearing a tie and things like that. Mm. So I think the, the reverberating effect other than just my general enjoyment of music today is, and my ability to listen to it. Like I listen and I like play drums while I listen and I like think about the baseline and I, but is just my, I don't know, just how I, how I go about my, my life in this. Um, yeah. Like I'm not, I'm never, I'm very rarely satisfied with how things are and don't look at things and say, oh, this is good. It shouldn't change, you know, because Mm I, my whole teenage years were, were very much in this, you know, uh, calling out of traditional structures and wanting things to change and, um, you know, sort of social movement sympathies and things like that. So I still feel those things very deeply today. And, um, like, I think that's kind of the lasting effect it's had on me is, is my, you know, just that, how I live in that way now and how I think about things, which is good and bad. Cause you know, I am a pastor and there is a sense of like maturity that I have to have, <laughs> but at the same time, like I call everyone dude and I, you know, I, I don't like wear a tie when I, you know, and you know, some people wish I did. I have tattoos and some people don't like that. You're a pastor with tattoos, you know? So it's, hmm. but 
then I'm like, all right, man, like whatever. That's funny. Rock on. I wonder if that's why I call everybody dude. I've ne- I've called every boss I've ever had dude. <laughs> I've never <laughs> called him by their name. It's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. It's probably because you didn't grow up in the South where they taught you to call him sir. Yeah. No, definitely <laughs> not. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah. Uh, well, guys. Yeah. That was good. What are you thinking? You think we should be done? I don't know. Yeah. Any more like, any more music, music thoughts or questions? I edited a two hour podcast with Tommy Graves this morning. And all we did was talk about music, so my brain is fried You're when fried it comes music. to talking yeah. about music. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah, it's no, good. I think that I think that's that was cool to just hear our stories around how music has formed us. Well, that was the music episode, folks. Um, I think we'll probably do a movies episode in the future. Oh, please. Top tens? <laughs> please. We're speaking my life. Yes. Uh, we should all yeah. come with a top ten list. Um, well, thanks for listening uh, to the music episodes. If you want to share your stories and music with us, just send us a send us a DM at Learn to Talk Podcast on, what is it, Instagram. Or you can email contact at learninghowtowalk.com. And if you have any topics you want to hear us tackle, talk about, think about, uh, send those in as well. We'd love to to share those conversations and experiences with you. This is just about us talking. It's about us and you in conversation together. So thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. We are Learn to Talk. What is it? Learning to Talk? I don't know. I'm confused every time, <laughs> to be honest. Learning to Rock. And yeah. uh, we will see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>